welcome back to my channel. So today I will be talking about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, the uh, the anime, the Scott Pilgrim anime. Uh, came out just last month, November seventeenth. Uh, came out on Netflix. Um, it has. The boys cast from the movie reprising their roles. It is an animated, animated series, ten episode animated uh, series, um, featuring the voice cast from the movie. So, Michael Cera returns as Scott Pilgrim. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as uh, Ramona Flowers, and so on, so on. Uh. While it does have that voice cast, it is not the movie. Uh, the animation style is based on the art style of the comic book, but it's not really the comic book either. I don't want to spoil anything. So it's, I'll be honest, it's actually really hard to talk about this show without spoiling. Just the fact that I'm saying that there are spoilers is a spoiler. <laughs> because, you know, the movie came out, what, 2010? Um, and the comics came out, you know, between 2004 and 2010 uh, that the, uh, the comics came out. So... Yeah, I wouldn't really worry too much about spoiling something that's 13 years old. Uh, so the fact that I am saying that there are spoilers is a spoiler. Uh, so yeah. It draws from the movie. It draws from the comics. It's not really either of those things. It is doing something different. Um, I won't get into the details on what it does that is different. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really liked this show. A lot of people bitched about it being, or not a lot, but a few people complained about feeling like it was a bait and switch sort of situation because based on the trailers, they thought it was going to be an adaptation of either the movie or the comics. They thought it'd be sort of a straight adaptation where it's very much not. So a lot of people felt, or no, again, some people complained about feeling like a bait and switch, like they were cheated somehow, but honestly, I thought that that was a really cool way of doing it. I thought like it was done really well and the fact that it was so different that it went so much against what was expected is a strength. You know, you go in, you like you're expecting it to be one thing and it's not that thing. And as I think some people have trouble sort of adapting when they get something that they're not expecting. Like they have trouble sort of judging things based on their own merits rather than on what they expected to get out of it. Um, so I really liked it. It was a really clever, interesting story that was still true to the spirit of the, particularly the comics, but also the movie, because the movie was based on the comics anyway, but especially true to the spirit of, but yeah, especially to like true to the spirit of the characters. Um, And did some really interesting 
things with those characters and explored them in ways that the movie, certainly that the movie couldn't. But even in the comics, you know, it was like it sort of explored some of these characters, especially the evil exes, explored some of these characters in ways that even the comics didn't really get much into. Um, I do like that it drew a lot more from the comic than the movie did. Uh, so we get things like Kim Pine talking about her, or Kim Pine talking about her story uh, where Scott rescued her from high schoolers back when they were in middle school. You know, middle school, Scott rescuing middle school, Kim from a bunch of high schoolers. Or the fact that uh, one of the evil exes, um, Todd, the vegan, uh, that he punched holes into the moon for both, uh, for both Envy and Ramona. So like that was something that the movie didn't touch on. Whereas the, the show brings it up that yeah, he punched holes in the moon for them. <laughs> those weird, like those really weird things. Um, the twins, Kyle and Ken Katayanagi, they just got more focus in general. They like they actually got to be present. My recollection of the movie, it's been a while since I watched the movie, my recollection of the movie is that they were just really dealt, dealt with really, really quickly in the movie. Here we do get to see a little bit more of them and uh, the robot. Uh, and just in general, there's a lot of characters that got short shrift in the movie just because time constraints, they only had, you know, less than two hours. They didn't have uh, a huge amount of time. So, you know, they had to, so the movie had to be careful with what it did include. Uh, this, this, they've got a little bit more time. It's, uh, yeah, well over 20 episodes, 20 minutes per episode and 10 episodes. So they've got, actually not that much more time than the movie come to think of it. Well, no, I guess it's a little over three hours. Um, so yeah, it's able to get into the heads of these characters better and uh, explore them inter in interesting ways. Uh, there's some really cool cameos as well. Uh, I, I'll, I always enjoy a Kevin McDonald cameo. And... Uh, There's also uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, two guys who work a lot with uh, Edgar Wright, part of the Cornetto, yeah, two guys from the Cornetto trilogy, the two main guy, the two main people from the Cornetto trilogy that uh, with Edgar Wright. Um, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and uh, End of the World. Or The World's End. I don't remember. Whichever. <laughs> so yeah, I love those. Like, those those guys are just really fun. They're great. Yeah, those guys are just really funny. So. And like I said, Kevin McDonald. Love Kevin McDonald. Yeah, I'm an old school, you know. Kids in the Hall. So, Kids in the Hall fan. So, I'm Canadian, so obviously I loved Kids in the Hall. So... <laughs> As soon as I heard him, I'm like, that's Kevin McDonald. And I looked it up and yep, that was Kevin McDonald. A few other good cameos as well. Um, some things I found interesting. So one thing I found very interesting. So Brie Larson obviously rep reprises her role as Envy Adams the pop star 
Rockstar, lead singer of Clash of, De the, De uh, the Clash of Demon Head. She doesn't sing in this one. For this one... Envy does do a new song, meaning one that wasn't in the original movie. It's a cover, it's a cover of an existing song, but uh, she does do a new song, but it's done by Metric. It's very clear, like, you know, it's Emily Haynes singing. And then we do see, we do hear a little bit of Black Sheep, but rather than, doesn't even, it's not even Emily Haynes singing there. It's just, it shows Emily, or it shows Envy on stage, you know, with the microphone aimed at the audience as the audience sings the song, which is awesome. Like, I mean, it's, it's a damn singable song. It's a damn good song. And very singable, so, you know, crowd singing it is really cool. But it's just interesting to me that, like, they just didn't have Brie Larson reprising the singing voice. They used Emily Haynes for the singing. And, I mean, fair enough. Emily Haynes is clearly the better singer because she's Emily friggin' Haynes. It's, you know, there's not a lot of singers on her level. She is just an incredible singer. But, I mean, it's not like, it's not like Brie's a bad singer. So, I feel that to be kind of an interesting choice. I suppose it probably was just... I suspect it was a way of... sort of elevating Envy Adams' character, saying, you know, this is a professional singer. So they brought in a professional singer to do it. Um... Wallace Wells remains delightful, just the best, the best character. Wallace Wells just steals every show, every scene he's in. Uh, he can't help it. He's just, he's just that, he's just that bitch. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Kieran Culkin is just so good as Wallace. Uh, everyone, everyone's clearly happy to be there. Um, Chris Evans has way too much fun being villains, being a villain. I think, like, I think being Captain America is sort of, it led to Chris Evans just really loving any opportunity he gets to be a bad guy, to be a jerk. So he's having the absolute best time of anyone on this uh, in this cast. Just, he is absolutely loving that he gets to be a dick. Um, but everyone's having a good time. Well, most of them are doing like that sort of, you know, jaded early 20s style of speaking. Um, but I mean, it works. Oh, and Ellen Wong also having an absolute blast. She is so damn happy to be there. And why would she be? She's a yeah. She is an absolute sweetheart. She's an absolute sweetheart person playing an absolute sweetheart character. So of course she's enjoying herself. Um, I like that. Uh, Steven Stills gets a bigger role. Kind of a shame that we don't see him, uh, that it doesn't get into the fact that, you know, that he's into dudes. Because in the comics, he actually ends up dating a guy, dating a guy in the comics. You know, uh, you know, it's something that sort of develops sort of in the background over a couple volumes, and then the final volume, Scott finds out that Steven's dating a man and is surprised by it because he was so in his own, you know, so in his own world, so obsessed with his own shit that he totally missed out on what his friends were doing. That was a big part of the comics, was the fact that, that Scott is pretty self-centered and needs to learn how to care about other people's feelings. And that was a big theme in this show as well, that he, you know, 
in growing up. Becoming less self-centered, more more considerate of other people's feelings. Uh, yeah, that was definitely a part of this. And speaking of which, it's interesting the way the art style, just the fact that he no longer looks like Michael Sarah, changes Scott's character. Because Michael Sarah just looks like a lovably awkward dude. You know, like, you can't believe... It's impossible to believe Michael Sarah as a jerk. You know, like, there was that movie where he played, like, a... version of himself that was awful. But the joke was that... You know, you would never expect Michael Sarah to behave like a jerk. Uh, so... You know, even when he's doing this bad shit... In... The mo in Scott Pilgrim... you still really sympathize with him. Like, it's... It's hard to see him as a jerk. It's just... awkwardness. Whereas comic Scott Pilgrim... Yeah, he's, a, he's an ass. <laughs> he thinks he's the coolest dude in the world, but he's... He's just an ass. He's kind of a shitty person in the comics. And the whole seven volumes is about him growing to be less shitty. Whereas the movie, it feels like the it's not less about him being less shitty and him being more confident. You know, still growing up, but a different type of growing up. Because that's Michael Cera. You don't know, imagine Scott Michael Cera being less of an asshole. But the fact that he now looks like Scott Pilgrim means that even when the lines are the same, there's a different vibe to them. You know, or at least some of the lines. You know, even when some of the lines are the same, there's a different vibe to them. You know, you still got that clueless, you know, kind of a little bit of charmingly clu clu uh, charming cluelessness, but he is somehow less lovable. Still very relatable, but you really want to see him grow as a character. You really want to like just be like, yeah, come on, stop being an asshole. So yeah, it's just it's. The animation style does change just the character, even though the voice is the same. The character feels different uh, from the movie. It does feel more in line with the comic version. Um, some of the other characters as well, just because they look like their comic book versions. It's mostly him, but, even, but a few of the others as well. Because they look like themselves, they feel more like themselves. Um, one incredibly petty complaint I have, and this is the absolute pettiest complaint you could possibly have. At the very end, they start playing the song Scott Pilgrim by the band Plum Tree. Great song. It's a bop. It's a really good song. Um, it is, in fact, the song that Brian that inspired Brian Lee O'Malley to use the name Scott Pilgrim. That's where O'Malley actually got the name Scott Pilgrim from. Was from that song because he was he was actually friends with. Uh, singer from uh, Plum Tree. Um, at the very least, he was a fan of them. Which just kind of weirdly interesting. 
<laughs> so yeah, they had a song called Scott Pilgrim, which is where Brian Lee O'Malley got the name from. Uh, so at the very end, they start playing that song. But they cut it off after 30 seconds. For a, uh, for like a stinger. And then they go into like, closing credits song. That's like, no! Why would you cut that song off? It's such a good song. Some other interesting songs in there as well. United States of Whatever by Liam Lynch. One of the episodes that opens with that song. And, uh... Yeah, afterwards I looked the song up and it came out in 2002. Which, uh, I am very, so very old. Because I remember when that song came out and was uh, a big hit. You know, the song started playing like, oh shit, hell yeah! Like, right at the start, it's like, oh shit! They're playing the United States of whatever? And then... Yeah, afterwards. Looked it up, 2002. I'm really old. A lot of other good songs as well. The uh, theme song is great. It's funny, like, first, you know, first heard, it's like, okay, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, I was like, I sort of broke it up. I broke the series up into chunks, so watched first three episodes one night, and, you know, I was like, yeah, it, yeah, right, yeah, this seems pretty good. Went back, you know, next night, went back to watch a few more episodes. I was like, the hell was I thinking that this song is pretty good? This song is freaking awesome. This song is great. So, like, it really grew on me overnight somehow. You know, from one to the next, it's like, it really absolutely grew on me. Um... Uh, Lots of really clever references throughout the show. Um, and, Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just, it's a really good... Oh, actually, I said, I think I said 10 episodes earlier. It's eight episodes. Which, yeah, would bring it, I think, a little under, a little under three hours. So actually, yeah, so not that much longer than the movie. Um, and yet, somehow, had a lot, felt like it had a lot more content. Um... Certainly a lot more emotional weight, I think, than the movie had. Still not as good as the comic. But, I mean, the comic's just so damn good. Uh, so yeah. Like I said, it's just, it's a really great show, really fun, really different from what I expected, but in a way that was thoroughly enjoyable. So, I definitely recommend it. Um, so, yeah. Scott Pilgrim takes off. Yeah, I suppose that's about all I've got to say about that. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.